The Beano, England's longest running comic and now the longest running comic in the world, has now hit 4,000 issues, which is a big landmark. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this episode of Legends of Podcasting. Now, joining me in the Wave Rider, we have Stuart. I'm Rob. And I'm Liam. And also joining us, a special guest this week, we actually have Nigel Parkinson, who is the artist for Dennis the Menace in the Beano, as well as various other characters as well. So it's great to have a special guest. So let's let's jump into it. So hi, Nigel. Thank you for joining us for the podcast. Hello there, Liam. It's nice to be here. How long have you been working on the Beano now? Well, on the Beano, I've been there for about 25 years. I've been drawing Dennis... Uh, pretty much for 20 years. I started doing Dennis 20 years ago and it got increasingly more and more involved drawing Dennis and now it's, uh, that's my gig, drawing Dennis. Oh, and the cover every week as well, don't forget that. I always draw the cover. You look at Abino now compared to the comic that I was reading uh, when I started reading it in the 80s, it yeah. looks very, very different. But these changes are great. I feel like it's, the Beano's done such a great job at moving with the times. Now yes, you... Uh, Go on, sorry. Can I just say, the changes are actually very gradual, except yes. on occasions we might have a special a revamp kind of thing and everyone notices it, but actually we change <laughs> all the time. And if you look from one year end to the next, they're radically different, you know. And of course, the addition to over 4,000 issues, there's no question of that. So you've been drawing comics since uh, the beginning of the 80s, correct? Since 1980. Since 1980. Yeah, that's right. Um, so when did you start reading the Beano then? Well, I mean, I used to read any comic. In fact, I used to read anything. Uh, from a very young age, like two or three years old, I would read any magazine, book, newspaper, comic, anything that was put in front of me. I couldn't really read it, but I would just enjoy <laughs> the, the, the look of the words, you know. I, I'm, I just any periodical, and I would love the fact that it would come out again next week or next month or whatever. I'm, from a very early age, I loved the idea of publishing. <laughs> and you're saying there, uh, making the point about not necessarily being able to read it, but looking at the the pictures with the yeah. like the work of say Leo Baxendale, where there's so much going on in the uh, in all of the images. It's great for for young kids who you don't even need to be able to read. You've just got to look at all of this stuff going on in yeah, all the pictures. Right. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, was famous for it because he tried to emulate what Giles, Carl Giles had done in the, in the Daily Express cartoons, which was to have a picture just packed with detail. And you can go back years later and find things you never even noticed, yeah. which are, are really funny. And of course, children have got better eyesight than adults, as I've been finding out to my cost these last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they spot these little things you put in that an adult might not even notice. And it's great fun to do because you can have like kind of subsidiary characters and you can even make things like buildings have their own character in it. Um, uh, adults don't really notice it. They just go, oh, yeah, there's a building. But the kids go, oh, there's a funny building. Or there's a building that's leaning to one side. That's a building that's not looking forward to tomorrow. You know, they spot these little things that you put in. I think it's great. So how much of an impact has um, artists like Leo Baxendale and Ken Reed oh, yeah. had on you and your, your style, your career? Well, when I was a, a child, we had... I think it was in their heyday. I mean, I know everyone says that, but uh, <laughs> in the, in the mid-60s, Baxendale and Ken Reed were, were working on a comic called Wham! and then Smash. And these were just uh, tremendously exciting things to see because Ken Reed was doing not only Frankenstein, or is it Frankie Steen? I've never been sure. Uh, but he also had <laughs> the, in the nerves, which for my money is the grossest and funniest comic strip ever done you check it out if you haven't seen it he only did it for about six months in 1968 but it's absolutely sensational and Baxner was just brilliant throughout the decade and that was what I sort of grew up on and I started to try and draw my own comics around the time they were doing it so I, I'm heavily influenced by them particularly Leo Baxter because frankly Ken Reed's stuff looked like it was too hard to draw, whereas Baxter's looked like it was easier. It's not actually the case, but it looked it. So, having read comics from such a, an early age, specifically like yeah. the um, British comics there, as the Bean Nose hit its 4,000th issue now, how would you describe how the comic has evolved and why do you think that the comic still resonates today? The Beano resonates today because it's still the best. And the reason it's the best is because 
it kind of pays attention to what the readers want. And what the readers want, the readers are like 6 to 11 years old. What they want is fun. They want anti-authority stuff. They want kind of crazy anarchy. And most of all, they just want it to be funny. And that's what we give them every week. Every line should be funny. Every drawing should be funny. I mean, every line of dialogue should be funny. Every drawing should be funny. Everything should be, even the way it's colored should be funny, you know? Uh, maybe the staples are put in in a very straightforward way, but everything else should be funny. You know? And that's what we did. Them. And we've changed it over the years solely to maintain that because there are certain things which were funny in the 50s, which are not funny now. I needn't go into detail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, we've kept up to date, you know. And even even from year to year, you know, like, with, say, for example, mobile phones, like, they change so often, and you forget that five years ago, mobile phones were like tiny, and that was the big thing. And five years before that, they were like, the hinge, dude, they flipped up, and that was the big thing, you know? So you've always got to keep up to date, otherwise you look like you're not going to know what you're doing, you know? And that's, that's what we do, we keep us up to date, fresh, funny. And most of all, it's, it's, kids aspire to being able to be like that, to have that kind of life that the characters we, who we, we draw, but because they can't have that kind of life because it's, it would just be mad. <laughs> the Beano now, I'd say, now it's added like Beano Studios as well yes. um, to it. Like the amount of work that the Beano does with speaking to the, um, to children today, like they, I believe, are now interviewing children at different schools on a regular, like weekly basis. So it's to make sure that they've always got the finger on the pulse as to what is cool right now and trying to make it so that the every week with a new issue that you are keeping super um super relevant you know yeah. with what the kids well, are into to be honest uh, they've always done that they've always done focus groups uh, now it's easier because of the internet and that oh, i never I knew mean, this they always did they've it. always done it yeah they did it back in the 60s and 70s yeah so how does this impact you as the as the artist with the stories like um how how much lead time do you get each week for 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 the story oh not enough <laughs> it's, you know when i started in comics it was like six to eight weeks was the lead time sometimes wow. now it's if we get two weeks that's a really good lead time oh wow it's a big uh, time I mean, was one thing it's very quick isn't it there was one thing i did i can't remember what it was now uh i can't remember what it was but it was recently and i was uh phoned it, this is how urgent it was i was phoned at 10 o'clock in the morning that they wanted it to go to press in at four o'clock that afternoon and wow. i did a page in that time i penciled it inked it colored it myself because there was no time to even send it to my my color artist nikki so uh, you know it was uh it can be really tight like that especially with, if you have to do something for an online thing because they often like when david bowie died the c CEO of Beano Studios wanted a, a sort of a tribute thing and had to dash that off so it could be uh, online that morning, you know. So these things happen very quickly. And it, we'd like to have six to eight weeks, but it's not 1980 anymore. No. I do remember um, when it happened and seeing the picture of Dennis with yeah. the uh, David Bowie lightning bolt across his face. That's it. And I, I do remember being actually quite impressed at how quickly the Beano <laughs> responded with that and uh, that you've got a picture up there. Um, yeah, that's, that's right. We, we want to be relevant because, you know, if you're not relevant, you're not really doing a job, are you, when it's uh, something that, yeah. that's, that people have in their hands and in their homes, you know. So uh, it, it means that we have to draw really fast. One of my big advantages is I've always been really quite fast at drawing. And I, you know, set out to be fast because I thought anyone can be really good at what they do if they take the time. That's, that was how I thought in those days. But not everyone can be really fast, so I've sort of trained myself up like, like an athlete to be really fast, you know? Oh, wow. I think I read in um, uh, one of the postings on your on your blog, um, you made a, uh, told a little story about at one of the uh, comic book conventions that you were there with someone from DC Thompson. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, they asked you to draw a picture yeah. of Dennis, and you drew That's it in right. 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was it was Morris who who was the editor of the Dandy at the time. He's retired now, so he won't mind me telling this. And he said, um, he, there's a lad of about eleven or twelve, 
And he said, oh, here's the man who can draw you the picture of Dennis. And I did it standing up just there, and everyone was amazed. And Morris said, if that's the time it takes you, we're paying you too much. And I said, <laughs> you're not paying me for the 10 seconds, you're paying me for the 20 years practice beforehand, you know. I know it's yeah. years practice. But the funny thing about that story is, I met that lad again, he's now like 25 or something, at a, a comic con a couple of years ago, and he said, I don't know if you remember me, but I was standing there with, with Morris Heggie and you came up and did a drawing of Dennis in 10 seconds. I said, not only do I remember it, I often tell that story. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was nice to have that. You know? <laughs> so the appearance of, of Dennis, uh, for example, in, in the Beano comic has changed over the year. There's a few different distinctive um, styles for it, for how yeah. it's drawn. Yeah. You've drawn more than one of the styles. Like you're obviously doing the, the current style. You were drawing him in the 90s, correct? That's right, yeah. Yeah, um, which was um, around the time when he briefly started to wear trainers instead of the uh, <laughs> shoes, which I remember that being a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when you're drawing one character a certain way for so long, how difficult is it then when the new style has been created? And also, are you involved in creating the new style? Yeah, we do change Dennis's appearance in a... Not radically, but in a noticeable way from time to time. Uh, we, we do every time there's a new animated TV series, we have to kind of match it a little bit so that it, people coming from the TV show, viewers who've never seen the Beano can, can understand it's the same character. Yeah. Um, and occasionally we have something like when I started, uh, David Parkins had just started drawing Dennis and he had a, really lovely style, but it's quite different from David Sutherland and, of course, Davy Law, who, who'd drawn it uh, before. Uh, so I was trying to emulate him. In fact, my first few uh, attempts, oh, I say attempts, they were published, so it was, it was fun. My first few jobs drawing Dennis, I thought, oh, yes, I've got to, you know, I've, I've mimicked David uh, Parkin's style really well, though no one noticed. And then I looked at them about a year later, and I thought, these are rubbish, you know. <laughs> they don't look anything like his style, you know. <laughs> but the Dennis of today, uh, the last, uh, should we say, three or four years, has been how I'd like to draw him. So I finally got to draw him the way I, I think works best uh for the character and for me and for the storylines and, and everyone seems pleased with it so that's nice yeah it's i do like the the new style and the way that he's drawn as Thank well you. as the one just beforehand where if, with the the when the second dennis cartoon came out oh, and yeah. um you know you so they changed the style a bit then and i i yeah. liked that but specifically lately i the way that it's drawn it's it matches in with dennis and nasher unleashed very nicely yeah as with all the character redesigns. Now, also another change in the Beano right now is, unlike when uh, when I was younger, the all the kids, they were all in Beano town, but they never saw each other in school. And oh. then they did the, you did the story arc where then now everyone's all now in the same school, which makes so much sense uh, yes. to do that. Like, um, what is, what's your take on, on that? Uh, it's, it can be, it can be quite, difficult for the uh, editorial staff because if they have everyone in the class and Dennis is in it, then I have to draw the story because I'm the Dennis guy. But if they have everyone except Dennis, then whoever's drawing that page can do it themselves, which means that you can't have, use Dennis an awful lot. Otherwise, I'd be drawing the whole comic all the time, you know, <laughs> which I could possibly do. I don't know. No, maybe I couldn't. Uh, but... So uh, there's the kind of difficulties that it's a bit odd if you have everyone in Beano Town except Dennis. It looks a bit strange, you know, so they try not to have everyone and they have like two people hanging out together or three or, you know, little, little combinations, you know, like Marvel comics used to do with two in one or whatever it was, you know. Uh, whereas, uh, the Dennis stories, because I, I have to do them, they, they tend to be for special events like, like the 4,000th issue, like, Christmas, Halloween, uh, you know, whatever, things like that. Or if there's a, a sudden topical event, such as a royal wedding or an election, <laughs> things like that, sometimes we do a story, and you should see the deadlines on those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love the fact that the Beano has – I know some people – don't like this, but I love how the Beano started to get a little bit political with things. I've I actually I have it received it arrived at the house um 
uh, just the other day, uh, the, the other week. But it's I go wait till Christmas because that was always Christmas. So <laughs> like, that's when I get the Bino annual. Um, yeah, so sure. I'll have to wait. But I look forward to it. Good. I've been talking an awful lot here. I just want to check with uh, Stuart and Rob also on the call. Is there anything you guys want to want to ask of Nigel? I had I had a, I had a couple of things just going back because I've written down as you were talking, Nigel, on a, on a couple of yeah. bits back. Um, I know that Liam's Liam's a sort of super super Bino fan, so I, I let him talk. I let him talk as such. But um, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just a couple of things. I mean, I was wondering. Obviously, you said you've been drawing it for like twenty years. I just wondered if if you if any like technology or anything has, or anything you've used uh, to like change and speed up the process of how you now draw them. I'm assuming twenty years ago it's pen, pen and pencil. Oh, uh, this question, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it still is. You know, I don't use pencil a lot. I I tend to just like lay out the page on um, paper. What's the paper I use? It's uh, layout paper very very thin and i sort of sort of do a sort of a sort of rough guide to what i want on the page if there's a particularly tricky uh drawing like we had an octopus holding the bash Street kids through the week uh, i had to sort of do more detailed pencils and then i use uh, pigment liner pens and sign pens to actually do the proper drawing and then i scan it in and at that point it becomes like a modern way, I scan it and send it to my, my colorist, Nikki, and she does the coloring. Uh, she used to come in, you know, 15 years ago, she used to come into the studio and sit there with marker pens doing all the coloring by hand, and we'd yeah. roll it up in a tube, and I'd send her out to post it, and she'd come back an hour later, and I'd say, where have you been? She'd have bought a dress, and you think, come on, I suppose to just go to the post office. <laughs> so we don't have that now. I don't know what she gets up to. She just does the work. <laughs> all is all online, I'm guessing. Yeah, exactly. She's probably shops online, yeah. So that's right, yeah. <laughs> all right, awesome, excellent. Um, and just a quick one, when you're talking about the sort of cartoons and how you've had to maybe mimic the style sometimes of the cartoons that come out, yeah. do you ever get, have you, they ever come to you or got involved in, Oh yeah. or yeah. you got involved in the cartoons and sort of giving them direction on how to do it? Yeah. The both the, the recent the recent one uh, Dennis Nash unleashed and the one before it from about ten years ago ten twelve years ago I was involved in the design of both of them. The oh, wow. first one was quite a small company in uh, Scotland, and uh, I didn't feel that it had worked quite as well as I'd hoped. The second one was quite a big deal in London, and. We had two goes at it, and the first go at it, I don't, know, I don't know if I can say this, whether it's public knowledge. The first go at it, I thought it was great. And the, but then the broadcasters thought that Dennis was a little bit menacing. So we made him, uh, made it a bit different. And then it was sort of taken out of my hands a little bit. But, uh, you know, I was, I was certainly involved in them. But it's such a, I mean, making a TV show is very different from making a comic because you have so many people involved, the animators and the production staff. You see in the list at the end of the show, there's like 50, 100 people. Whereas in the comic, there's like the writer, Nigel Octoluni, me, Nikki, my colorist, and then the editorial staff have put the word balloons on and there you go. Mm. Yeah, it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. It's still just like just that small number of people to make the Beano as well. If you think like this day and age. Yeah. They could they could bring yeah. in so many other people. They could do with a few more, to be honest. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know, the studios give them a couple of extra staff. You know, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, leave a new job. There you go. There you go. <laughs> excellent. Just a, um, just a quick quick question for myself. Um, leading on from the, uh, the the cartoons, Nigel. Um, yeah. you, do you find that with um, obviously the Beano's continuing success and growth, and um, with the cartoons being a sort of I don't want to say more wider reaching medium, but obviously mm -hmm. A lot more children will see it than than they would be um, if from, through the print. Um, that you get a lot more um, sort of oh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um, is it more uh, worldwide international audience feel for the comics now than there were back in the, in the mid '80s? To uh, do you know there's, there's always been a small audience for the comics overseas? The, in, for some reason, in the nineties, it, it was very big in China for a while. I don't, never, really, never understood <laughs> that. Yeah, uh, yeah, but obviously the TV show. Uh, it's now for the first time. Dennis is known in in France and across Europe, which is nice. Uh, if anyone at a comic con in France wants to invite me, then uh, go ahead. <laughs> and um, also, it's just been it just started showing in America last month, uh, which is 
good news. Of course, that's one of the reasons why we couldn't call it Dennis the Menace because they've got their own Dennis the Menace. So we had to call it Dennis and Nasher Unleashed. So um, but we don't really have any, we don't really seem to have much of a crossover. When I do comic cons, I do one almost every weekend at the moment. Um, and the kids who've seen him on TV uh, tend to also have seen the comic. So I, I, I think in, in terms of British audience, although the Beano sells about 8% more year on year for the past five years, which is astonishingly increased when you think about it for a print publication. And then on top of that, we've got the, uh, you know, the sort of online subscriptions as well. So uh, we're doing something right. And the TV show just kind of helps that. They've kind of regarded as uh, separate entities in, in many ways because the, the, the TV show can be repeated and sold abroad and people can catch up on it later. Whereas the Beano is a weekly thing which has a lot of currency in terms of uh, uh, what it can do. You know, a TV show takes weeks, months to produce it. As we've noticed, a uh, comic can be done a uh, turnaround very, very quickly, you know. So, and then we've got the website as well, so Vino. So we've got, you know, we've got a lot of Vino Studio stuff going on. And, but the Vino comic's like right at the heart of it and is doing better year on year. And come and see me if I've had a comic con, get me to draw your character. Hey, well, <laughs> which, one right? to? which one are you going to? <laughs> which ones am I going to? I've just done yeah. 12 on a trot over the last 12 weekends. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> Today I'm going to Cardiff, uh, Friday the 6th of September, I think it is, yeah. And I have Comic Con tomorrow, and then I've got Norwich at the end of September. That's a big two-day one. Buxton, 20th of October, that's a Sunday one. I've got, what's the one in November? End of 23rd, 24th of November, Reading, that's right. That's near London, anyone can come to that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make a date. Half an hour. Yeah, and uh, uh, there's loads of others next year, so yeah, come along. It's good fun. Yeah, I can see from uh, your activity online that you're you're very active with the uh, comic yes. conventions now, which is great. Well, you know, it's great because I, when you when I started, I was you know obviously sitting in a room drawing, and no one knew what I was doing, and then six weeks later it'd be published, and then maybe a year later, the Beano editor would say, "Oh, that thing you did last year was good. We got a couple of letters." I said, "Oh, that's nice." Whereas now you get immediate feedback because not only online but in person when you go to a comic con. I, I had I had one girl in Dublin a couple of years ago. She was standing. At, we, we're always very me and Nikki often do them together. But I've been doing them by myself recently because she hasn't been there. But she'll be back. And uh, there's usually a big crowd of people around me as I'm drawing. You know, and there was one girl, young girl standing on the outskirts for a while and then we noticed her coming closer and closer and closer and then she suddenly said you are the best artist in the bean and I said <laughs> uh, who says that? And she said I say that <laughs> so I thought, well, that's nice you know, it's nice to have people validate what you do and it's not just sitting in a room by yourself anymore it's like people, you do have an audience people do appreciate it and that's nice to hear you yeah. So that is cool. Like, um, so now that the Beano has hit its 4,000th issue, it's been around for so long, longest running um, comic, I believe, in the world. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, you started off as a, like, liking these um, comics as a young kid. That's now right. you are the artist at this point. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's that yeah. like for <laughs> you to uh, on that journey? Because I imagine, like, from as a young age to, to, to hit yeah. this point, that's got to be... It's got to be a dream. Uh, it is. Uh, it's weird because I, it's like I always like assumed that this would happen because <laughs> I couldn't do anything else. You know, I never, I never applied myself to any form of employment other than drawing comics. So it's been like very. Uh, it's it, sometimes I I sit here and I think I can't believe I'm I'm the Dennis the Man guy in the, in the Beano. The Beano. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it so long and. You know, and the, how did that happen? How did it happen? And I, like a lot of things, you don't you don't plan it, but it it does happen. But in a way, I was wondering whether maybe I did plan it, or maybe I knew all the things I had to do. You know, uh, which part of it was for seventeen years. I asked, I asked the Beano editor once a year, every year, any work for me, and he'd always say no. 
And then one year he said yes. And that was just as simple as that, you know. It sounds it sounds like it's simple. Of course it's very complicated because what if he'd said no again? You know, would I have persisted for another year? You know, we just don't know. It, everything just falls into place somehow and uh, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just baffling. Well, I'm glad you did persist because uh, I do think that your uh, your drawing style is very much the Beano. Like when oh. you think of the Beano, your style that is that it okay. is perfect. On that note, it is time to wrap up this episode. So um, thank you, Nigel, for joining okay, us for you. our for episode. So that's it for this episode of Legends of Podcasts. And be sure to click that subscribe button wherever you found this episode. And also, you can find us across social media. Just look for Legends of Podcasting. We're also on YouTube. So you can head over there and find reaction videos, lots of current comic book-based TV shows. And also, our guest this week, Nigel Parkinson, is also on social media. So be sure to look for Nigel Parkinson, as well as The Beano. Follow The Beano. There's lots of great stuff that they are posting online now. And you can find Nigel Parkinson at pretty much most comic book conventions in the UK now. So be sure to swing by, say hi. And uh, and yeah, I think that's it. We know that we're going to be uh, hunting out Nigel at the comic book conventions. So that's, uh, that's bye from me. It's bye from Stuart. And bye from Rob. Bye. Everyone we know loves the Beano.